G'day, Dr. Carl here, and I'm lucky enough to be watching some scenes from the Fast and Furious franchise, 10 movies in all, and I'm looking at them with the heart-demanding eye of science, but tempered by the soft and kind eye of art. They've got a bloody tank. What's he doing? Sick. Hang on, how does that bloody physics work? That was neat. The big steel rope makes the car swing around, come back up, and then hit the bottom of this bridge that the concrete has to be about three or four meters thick. And it not only goes through the concrete, it lifts up this 50 ton tank, maybe four meters into the air. What a one ton car, come on, give me a break. Conservation of momentum dudes. She has now been thrown off the tank and is flying through space and simultaneously is about to suddenly disobey the laws of momentum and start falling towards the ground. But he then cleverly jumps out, smashes his car into the railing, which it doesn't go through, flies through the air, and she... Why does he have to catch her? Oh, they're doing... They broke the rule. They crossed the line. In cinematography, you know, the concept of crossing the line? They've crossed the line to make it confusing to the audience and they forget the hundreds of people around them with guns trying to kill them while they head in for that clincher of a kiss. Oh my God. What's not to like, man? Whoa! The vault seems to be disobeying the laws of physics and sometimes it goes really slowly and sometimes it goes really quickly. That's okay. It's made of something that absolutely does not distort all because the police cars shatter and it doesn't. It's way impossible for him to drag that with only two wheel drive. Very clever physics here. He deliberately makes the vault swing out over the um, embankment of the concrete, then swing around and he gets to escape just before it squashes him. There are a bunch of holes or marks on his car from the bullets, but for some reason, even though the holes are that big, the bullets don't penetrate through his car. So that means it, the car's made of some sort of unobtainium, some super strong material that doesn't exist yet. Oh, what's not to like? So here we are in Fast and Furious 7 where they are mercenaries for hire, but with a heart of gold. In other words, they kill for Jesus. So it's okay. And they're in a giant plane and they pop out the parachute and the car gets pulled out of the back. Four engine plane, so it's probably a C5, which could have a whole bunch of planes in it. Realistic so far. The cars then get pulled out by the parachute that they throw out the back. And then that parachute gets dumped and they just, all the cars are just falling out of the sky in free falling. So some of them are tumbling. How are they going to recover from this? Twelve hundred feet is not a lot. Yeah, right. That's very close. They actually managed to pop the parachute at exactly the right moment, and they've landed on a road, so they're heading in the right direction. And all they have to do is pop the parachute, and they've already got some forward velocity on the road with no shocks whatsoever. Oh my God! What is not to like on this? Oh, they are so good. Oh. Bowie, did you see Ford versus Ferrari? Yes. What a great Great film. Oh, my God. Oh, hang on. Can you come around yeah, here, Angus? So who's that guy? What's That's that? Jason Statham. Now, okay, so he's a tough guy. He's got a vendetta against them because uh, right. the tank diving film, Yep. the man that was chasing them is actually his brother. So now oh. it's personal. So now oh. he's saying, I'm coming to her. And, and he plays tough guys in lots of movies. That's all he does. Yeah, okay. yeah he does it exceptionally well. He does it very well. Now for a second scene from Fast and Furious 7, so outrageous. This is a very big building. It must be about a kilometre wide. Yeah. Oh my God. The car jumps from one building to the next through the air, which is not impossible. Um, and the physics kind of looks like, the parabola kind of looks right. You'd have to have a lot of speed, but of course that's what the car's for. You want to make sure also that when you intersect the next building, you don't just go slog straight into a five metre slab of concrete, but you go above it or below it. Luckily, of course, or cleverly, being fast and furious, they did that. They... No brakes, no brakes. Well, of course, what do you do when you have no brakes? You accelerate and go faster. Of course, that makes perfect sense. Always works. Oh, this is very clever. What he's actually doing is doing wheelies or donuts 
to scrub off the speed by sideways friction. Very good physics there because he doesn't have any brakes. And with the timing of Neil Armstrong on the lunar lander, he gets out just before the whole thing goes and it falls towards the ground. In these movies, there's a strange mix of respect for the laws of physics and momentum and total and utter disdain. Sure, anything you like. It's just so long as it looks good. And it does. What is it called? The Fa Fast and Furious? Fate of the Furious. Fate of the Furious. Yeah. Is that, was, was that the proper name of That's it? That's right. Was that their joke to call it F8? Yeah. Ah. So the torpedo somehow makes the vehicle catch on fire without exploding itself. Left them back! What? Turn the goddamn... What you have is a nuclear powered submarine underwater chasing a vehicle above the ice, of course. And now the torpedo is undamaged and keeps on going. And then the rock, oh my God, we've got the rock. The rock is going to do his stuff. He's got a beard this time, but he's part of the bald man genre. The bald man proves that he has a high testosterone level, thereby being a good lover, but basically a lousy husband. He won't hang around for the kids, but in the short term, good time. Okay, and so he then opens the door, oh my God, and he's going to kick this. He's going to kick it. He's going to kick this torpedo off to one side. And we ignore the fact that they have already been overtaken by the people who are chasing them. Don't worry about that. And they're using the same vehicle blowing up again. It doesn't matter. Um, how realistic is this? Um, probably two out of 100, not two out of 10. Uh, but on the other hand, it is very enthralling and it moves really quickly. Ah, now for Fast and Furious 9. So now we're moving into space. Hang on. Wait a second, wait a second. What's this vehicle they're being launched from? So they're on the back of essentially a rocket and they've got a uh, Pontiac strapped to a rocket to take them into outer space. I don't recognize this airplane. It's only got two engines. So, and they're wearing spacesuits. And they've, minor point here, they've only got three rockets and they've thrown off two and they've still got three rockets left. <laughs> and now they're in space. We're in outer space! Ah, hey, Let's space. And so the obvious thing is you get three huge rockets and bolt them to a Pontiac, one on top and one on the left bottom, one on the right bottom. And of course, you bolt it to the top of some poorly defined aircraft that has only two engines, looks military, and has a T-tail, so I think that could be fictional. And they're wearing some charmingly antiquated, I swear, diving suits. They then keep on going up into orbit and they're shaking around. And then suddenly we're heading into an almost, oh my God, We've got an homage to 2001 A Space Odyssey. Maybe they're actually revealing the Earth is flat. I don't know. Anyway, so they're in orbit and they've got, now they're throwing off everything they don't need, which turns out to be all their rockets. And so basically you've got the shell of a Pontiac with some people in diving suits inside with no control and no structural integrity and no authority over their direction. And of course, being Fast and Furious 9, there will be a happy ending and they will win in the end, of course. So where does a science-loving person stand having watched all of these scenes from various movies? And you've got to remember this. A movie is life without the boring bits. They've all been cut out. Nobody goes to the toilet, nobody reads a book. And in this case, who needs science? You just say you want to be there, you want this to happen, and it does happen and the story picks you up and you go for the ride and providing they do it well enough, which they have, I'm very happy. Ah, how can you not love Fast and Furious?